There's been a lot of ups and downs this year, a lot of heartache, a lot of great moments. But all the work and everything we've done was to prepare for today. All the work and all the preparation comes to this. We have to be one point ahead when it's over. All right, we worked our tail off. We went through a, a season. We put ourselves in a position, and now the ultimate goal is in front of us, and we have to win four games in eight days. And that's all this is about, finding a way to win. Because if you don't, it's over. It's win or go home. One of the two teams is going home. We've put ourselves in this position. All the negative, all the positive has set us up to handle the pressure of this. Why not us? For any college basketball team, March is a time to take stock of the regular season that was and the potential of the postseason that lies ahead. The Oakland men's basketball team closed out their first Horizon League schedule with a home game against league leaders Green Bay as February came to a close, still vying for a chance at a postseason home game at the arena. They're number one and I think they clinched it uh, the game before. And um, So you know, we, we really wanted that game. When you go back and look at Team 47 and, and what defined them, I think the fact that um, you know, there was a lot of adversity. We went into a new league, bigger, stronger, faster league, uh, much higher rated with, we found out was a very, very good league. And, um, and then we, had, we, were, we were besieged by injuries where we lost four players for the season before the season ever started. Yeah, a lot of fight, determination. One time we was like down, like three minutes left, like 10 down, ended up winning the game. And come from 15 down, basically like the comeback kids or something like that. It was fun. Come back, seven of them games, and we just wouldn't quit. Duke, baseline three on the way, and it's good. Duke, Monday. Brown over to Finley. Finley on the drive to the paint off the heel, and good. Dumps it down low. Alley you play to Kate Felder. On the left wing. He's up top. Now a three on the way from Brown, and he fills it up. High ball screen, Corey Petros. Three on the way for Duke. He got it again. They have three offensive rebounds. Now, all three of them hurt us, but we've stopped that. They haven't had one. In the last, 12, uh, last 10 minutes and a half, they're four of 12 from the floor. We got an eight-point lead. They came back and tied it. Now we got it back up. All right? Now we need to go get four stops in a row. Let's go get this thing. We get this and we play here next Tuesday. All right? Come on. Down low, Corey Petros, right hand. We were destroying them at the first half. You know, we had the tempo, we had the momentum, you know, we were playing hard. And then in the second half, we just slipped up, you know, but um, it was a fun memory, you know, that, that what could, well, wasn't the last game to play with Travis and Duke and Joey at home, but, you know, it was a good memory to have with them. Inbound, and it's stolen away by Faust, and Faust is off to the races, and will throw down a jam with the right hand. Screen 24. Brown rolls to the rim and throws down a two-handed dunk. Felder on the drive to the lane. Puts a shot up and in. Hey, Felder connects. So Green Bay storms back and gets the victory 71 to 63. Even though the Golden Grizzlies fell short against the Phoenix, the last home game of the regular season was also an occasion to bid farewell to some of the team's heroes whose time on campus had come to an end. Duke Mundy, and he's just one of those guys who, you know, same thing, he's got that, that, um, that fight in him. You know, he, he's a defensive player. He's led the nation in steals last year. I think he's second this year. So um, it, it was a, amazing playing with him. Um, you know, I, I'm not the best on defense, and he's uh, a great defensive player. To, so for him to get those steals and kind of leak out into transition, and, um, you know, he had that ability to find me and, and um, find everybody else out on the court, uh, you know, I'm really going to miss playing with him. Joey, you know, I've known him since ninth grade, you know, he's one of my best friends. He always worked hard at practice, he's one of the hardest workers I've ever been around. I've been here for five years and, 
it's just crazy to think that it's, you know, it was coming to an end and um, that it's over. But, you know, just looking around the faces in the crowd, um, you know, former teammate Drew Valentine, one of my best friends was there, um, you know, just seeing my family and, and everybody that has helped me along the way. So uh, it was definitely emotional, kind of thinking that's maybe the last time that uh, we would play in the arena even though it really wasn't. But, um, you know, just a lot of emotions and thoughts running through my head through the past, um, over the past five years to that moment. All he did for this university, uh, it's just amazing that where he came from, a, a 6'3 and a half, 157 pound kid, to a just under 6'6, just under 200 pound man that set, you know, not one, but two NCAA records. He's career all time. And then he he's, has a chance still as we do as we tape this to lead the nation in free throw percentage and um, to lead the nation in another category besides I mean it's just unbelievable and amazing and then what he was as a person and what he meant to our program and you know to graduate with a master's degree to the amount of community service work he did his senior night speech was unbelievable Expectations are a funny thing in college sports. It's almost as if they're meant to be defied, whether it's a thrilling upset or an agonizing injury. While few expected the Oakland women's team to make an impact at the beginning of the first Horizon League season, those expectations were certainly defied as the team battled its way through the regular season, and a lot of it had to do with their new leader at the helm. The OU women's basketball team has a lot to smile about after their first season competing in the Horizon League. Well, I think it's been a very successful season. You know, the, the team has really bought into what we're doing. They've really uh, sold out to our system, and they're a fun group to be around. They're great kids, and um, to be 8-8 eight eight in the Horizon League in our first year, you know, and, and they've really struggled the last couple years, and to, to bounce back and to be able to do what we did this year, I think it's a great first step in the right direction. We talked all year about laying a solid foundation for the program for years to come, and I think we've done that. First year head coach Jeff Tungate learned a lot about himself and his team since their journey began last summer. He hates to lose and cares deeply about his players. Tungate also reinforced why he's a coach in the first place see the difference that, 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 that's been made in these kids' lives, to see them happy, to see them walking with a smile on their face, to see them show up to practice. I mean, we're in March right now, and our whole team's staying after practice still working on their game. And, and to see that really um, just kind of, I've always known why I coach, but it's just to see that and to see that in our teams really meant a lot to me this year. The Grizzlies were ready to turn things around this season. Last year, they won only one of their last 10 games and finished the season 3-13 in conference play. A boost in confidence did wonders for the team, who ended up 8-8 eight eight in the Horizon League. Now we come to practice, they, they expect to make shots, they expect to get, st get stops, they expect their teammates to stand up on the bench and cheer for them. And just to see their confidence go from, um, you know, really at a low level to a high level now, I think is the biggest thing I've seen. Tungate was not surprised with how the team bounced back so quickly. We've got great leadership, they're resilient kids, and they've got an expectation level that they want to meet. And, you know, we've talked about reaching our potential, and we don't really talk about winning and losing. We talk about, you know, do, taking the, doing the best you can with what you've got. And, and our team, they always bounce back. Anytime we got down, we never quit. If we got down um, and got behind, we would play from start to finish. There's games we'd be down 20. Next thing you know, you look up, we're down eight. Um, it's a team that just doesn't quit. They don't let anyone um, allow them to quit, and so it doesn't surprise me that they've got that kind of resilience. The women nearly tripled their wins in conference play from just a year ago, and senior captain Bethany Waterworth put up career numbers despite missing more than a year with a serious back injury. But none of that is as important as the team coming together as Golden Grizzlies. To see the team camaraderie that we've built and the true caring that they have for each other, that's the thing I'm, I'm the proudest of. We've really developed a, a team culture where they all care about each other, and it's just fun to see them walking around, proud to be a member of Oakland University women's basketball, knowing they've had a very successful first season, 
and just to see them have that confidence really means a lot. While the move to the Horizon League has been an adjustment for all of Oakland's athletic programs, perhaps no team has benefited more from the move than men's and women's swimming and diving. Once again, led by head coach Pete Hovland, Oakland swimmers blasted their way through the league championship, demolishing Horizon League records and claiming Oakland's first league titles on March 1st. Junior Trisha Grant became the first diver to qualify for the NCAA championships in Horizon League and School Division I history. As March arrives and senior leaders say goodbye, teams and fans alike start to think about the future and keep an eye on new faces that have captured the spotlight. While Horizon League Freshman of the Year Khalil Felder turned heads all season long, it was another Golden Grizzly who came on strong in the season's final games as the Arena Faithful saw a potential coming attraction for 2014-2015. It's never easy when you transfer to a new school, but for Ralph Hill, making the jump to Oakland was the easy part. Even before he arrived on campus, Hill was experiencing pain in both of his legs. The pain just kept progressively getting worse and worse until I had to go get x-rays, and that's when they showed the, the cracks in my shins. Hill had stress fractures in both of his shins. Before he could even put on an Oakland jersey, he was sidelined indefinitely, with no guarantees that he'd be able to return to playing basketball. It was one of the hardest points of my life, you know, seeing, seeing the fact that I couldn't do the thing that I loved um, and the fact that there were times where I would wake up in the morning and really think, like, this might be it. Like, I really might not be able to play this game anymore. Hill started taking vitamin supplements and did whatever he could to rehab. Eventually, he got the news he'd been waiting for. That first day he said I could go, I was already in the gym ready to play open gym. I mean that whole week, maybe even that whole month, I just had a nonstop smile on my face knowing that I'd be able to play again. But Hill had a long hill to climb to get back to where he once was. Not only did he have to work his way back into shape, but he also had to overcome the mental hurdle with his legs. I know the first couple of months I barely jumped at all. Like I was really scared. There were a couple practices in the year where I felt great, where I would be running and, you know, I'd be running and I would think, yo, my legs aren't hurting or I would go and I'd get a rebound or dunk or something inside and I'd be like, my shins don't hurt at all right now. Then in mid-February came a shot of confidence from Coach Campy. It turned out to be a turning point for Hill. I decided to give Ralph a chance in practice to play with the starters and he was awesome. <laughs> he, played, he had the best practice. And so we came back the next day and had a re another really good practice and we said, you know what, Ralph, we're gonna give you a chance. When he told me that, you know, it was, it was a relief, like, you know, finally I get my chance to shine, I get my chance to show what I'm capable of. But also it was like, you know, I just want to do what I can to help this team win. It felt good, I'm not gonna lie. Hill started and scored 11 points to help Oakland complete a season sweep of rival Detroit. Keep your head, keep your head. Great job, keep your head. After everything he had been through, Hill finally felt like his old self. Now he can't wait for the future. To be able to finally have a summer where I can actually get in the gym and work and refine my game is, is a really good feeling. And I really can't wait to, to, for people to see how far I've jumped from the end of this year to the beginning of next year. By the Golden Grizzlies' final game on the road at Youngstown State on March 1st, it was clear that the winner would be hosting a rematch just a few days later in the first round of the Horizon League tournament. Oakland pulled out the win in the Penguins' home court, setting the stage for a postseason thriller in Rochester. We didn't want to stay in Youngstown. We didn't want to um, stay there for, I think it was four days, and, and just stay in the hotel and practice there and, and wait till, till we played in the conference tournament. So we really wanted to take it home. Um, you know, we know the advantage of playing at home, especially in the tournament and just bringing it back to, you know, to these fans and, and giving them one last game. Uh, we put ourselves in a position Saturday to be able to come home and play with one more home game, game one of four.
When the Oakland Golden Grizzlies took the floor in front of their home crowd on March 4th, a second season had begun. It was win or go home, with a victory punching a ticket to Green Bay for the next round, and the black and gold rose to the challenge. One-on-one, -on -one crosses over, flash, drop off, Corey Petros, right hand, a hook shot, and it's good. Hey, Felder on the drive, kicks it out, Duke Monday for three, and it's good from the right wing. It's now drive baseline to the rim, shot blocked by Ralph Hill. Weber collects, blocked again by Ralph Hill, down to Travis Maynard. Dante Williams throws it in the post to Duke Monday. He crosses over off the glass. Nifty move by Duke Monday. <laughs> Golden Grizzlies haven't made a field goal since the 12 minute mark, and there's a three point shot. Dante entry pass to Corey Petros, puts it on the deck, right handed hook shot, and one, Corey Petros. So one second left, fires from half court, it's short. So this whole second half, this whole moving on to the next game is all about playing defense. All right? We battled to get a home game so that we could be here and win a game like this. Now it's right there in front of us, all right? Let's go do this. Let's go do it right from the start, all right? Hey, we got to be one point ahead. One point ahead, that's all. 18.55 to play, Corey Petros going to work. Right-handed hook shot, and it's good. Bielan steps into a three and rattles it home, and we are tied at 31. Gwendrick Perry on the run, fills it up. The Penguins are up by five. Fader catches, fires for three, and he fills it up. I'll let to Travis Bader, step back, three on the way. Travis Bader has it crossing over. He'll fire for three. Rattles and drops, of course, Travis Bader. Down low, Corey Petros with a two-handed flush. Duke Mundy has it. Shaking, baking, driving to the lane. Hanks and banks it in off the square. Duke Mundy fires a three. Duke Mundy! It was a game that went down to a fraction of a second. With a 500th career three-pointer from Travis Bader that put overtime in reach and set up an improbable finish in regulation. I saw people were walking out with the less, uh, with a minute left, whatever. And, you know, we just always fought and we never knew, we knew, we all knew that we were gonna win that game no matter what it took. I just remember a battle, you know, <laughs> a basketball war. You know, it was kind of like chess, like, damn, we uh, maneuvered and uh, made a draw up a great play. Bader, you're gonna come, and if the guy's guarding him, you're gonna get right there, and Tommy, you're here, and Duke, you're here. Six tenths of a second to play. Benzinger to inbound. We get a whistle and a foul! Campy drew it up, and Travis went ahead and did what he had to do, and that foul was called. Big time player made a big time, some big time free throws. When you think of the pressure, when it, you have a game like that that's gone one, lost, one, lost, and now he's got to go to the line and make two free throws with nobody on the line, with, you know, 3,000 Oakland fans, you know, oh my God, we, we can still win this thing. You know, and, he went, and the net hardly moved on either free throw. I mean, in that game, Bader made 18 of 18 from the free throw line. And if you look at it from like 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 that he made, if he misses any one of those, his career's over. And he swish, 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 swish.
pass down low. Ralph Hill up off the glass. No. Offensive rebound, Tommy McHugh. Right hand so good. Three-point shot on the way from Weber is wow. no good. Survive in advance and survive being the operative word. You know, I think that kind of sums up our whole season right there, just that game. And, uh, you know, we had that fight in us, and, and we came back with three minutes to go. I think we came back ten points. And, um, you know, that's what this team's been doing all year. And, um, you know, we've been giving people uh, some heart attacks out there in the stands. But, um, you know, we had that fight, and, and we kept believing even when there was, you know, three seconds and we're down. Uh, we're, we're still losing the game. You know, we always had that fight and belief that we were going to win it. And, um, you know, I definitely think that this team is, uh, that's what we'll be remembered for. And while Oakland couldn't find any more magic in their quarterfinals trip to Green Bay to face Wright State, it's clear that 2013-2014 still held more than a few highlights. A team that never gave up, a team that gave you thrills, uh, and a team that swept Detroit. I think that would be Team 47. We all had a team meeting, Team 48, really, all of us, in uh, the, the hotel room after the game. We just talked about next year right away. And we just talked about what we expect, like what are we going to do, like off season. So we expect to win. Our goal is to be in that upper echelon, the top one or two, three teams every year. And consistency is the hallmark of greatness, and that's what we want. And we, we were able to do that in all the other leagues we've ever gotten in. You know, all through my time here, every league we've ever been in, we, it, it took some time, but we were able to get where we were consistently a top three team, and that's our goal. In the